move. Um, first of all, it was a great day for us. We're really excited about uh, whom we got signed up today. I want to thank uh, our recruiting department and Brian Overton and Hub and Sierra and and uh, Charlie and and everybody that had Hannah, all the po folks that had all G that had everything to do with and our coaching staff. Um, we went out for needs and uh, we. Signed 11 on offense, 11 on defense, and we, we got a kicker um, uh, out of the deal, out of the transfer portal as well. Five offensive linemen uh, so far. Three of them were uh, out of the transfer portal. Two wide receivers, two quarterbacks, one in the portal, a running back, a tight end uh, out of the portal. Uh, DBs, we had six. Uh, one out of the portal at this point. Linebacker three, one out of the portal at this point. And uh, looks like now we're at three wide receivers instead of two. Uh, go Hogs. Um, we got a D lineman um, um, out of high school, two of them that we really liked. I don't know, I, I got screwed up there as I was going down. I got the thumbs up on Ashton Bethel Roman. So um, really excited. So that puts us at 24. And uh, we have one scholarship out um, uh, that um, we're very, very ex hopeful that we were able to uh, sign that young man as well. Um, in uh, this process, uh, we want to make sure that we didn't uh, reach on anybody that um, we, you know, at times last year might have been somewhat of a little bit of a panic because of numbers. And so you're going, well, we I think we this guy is going to be a good player for us, all these things. We did not want to do that at all. We did not want to recruit uh, anybody that we thought might be depth, everybody that I'm talking about out of the portal. It would be all uh, plug and play. Uh, obviously, they go to learn, they've got to earn that. But um, we're very, very happy with what we did out of high school. Uh, certainly, uh, we're going to miss every now and then on players uh, that we we uh, offer. Um, we are more concerned about the ones we get than the ones we lost. Um, but overall, I thought this was an outstanding day for the Hogs. And more importantly, uh, we're headed in the right direction at quarterback. And I'm talking about both of them. And we're headed in the right direction on the O-line. I'm talking about high school and transfers, and we're not done yet. Uh, but those were two, uh, two big key areas that we wanted to try to address um, in recruiting. And we did. We obviously know we have the third through the seventh period there that we've got some work to do. I think we have about eight scholarships left. And so um, we've got to be right because I think we only have 10 visits left, you know, so we're, we're close to maxed out there. Uh, but we have that, and then obviously you've got your second signing period, and then uh, it opens back up in April. So with that, I'm really excited, guys, about what went on. I'm, I'm proud of our coaches for what they did, and, and I'll answer any questions you might have. Hey, Sam, where would you like to direct what's left of the class? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I still think uh, on the defensive side, um, you know, out of the portal, I think you'd need a, a, a corner, um, a linebacker. Um, obviously, I think uh, you would need an edge, edge and an interior. Um, so there's four. And then uh, on the offensive side of the ball, I think we need another interior uh, offensive lineman. Um, I think we're fine at tight end. I think we're fine at quarterback. Uh, I think we need a running back out of the portal and uh, and a wide receiver. So I think that's probably pretty close to eight right there. It's the first chance we've had to talk to you about Eric Mateos. Just you obviously worked with him before. What, what's he going to mean maybe to the program? I love him, first of all. I mean, he's a wonderful person, a hard worker, um, uh, obviously proven. Um, 
went to Texas State, went to LSU after here, obviously coached some tight ends at, at some point in that career, uh, went to Texas State. Uh, then BYU had one of the top lines in the country in the Joe Moore Award um, candidates, uh, went to Baylor, and same thing down there, coached several NFL offensive linemen. I think he's got four or five guys he's had, had his hands on uh, that are starting in the NFL right now at center. And uh, he's just a, a wonderful man. The thing I like most about him is that he wanted to be here. Um, when I called him, it was absolutely – had uh, a uh, wonderful family. And uh, I'm just real proud that uh, he's come. We've already seen some of the great work that he's done uh, at the center position in the portal. Uh, he kept – uh, the two linemen, obviously, we, we love Kobe Bram Branham and we like and, and Zuri. Uh, we kept those two and then went out and got whom we think is a super player in in uh, Junior, uh, Carmona, and uh, certainly Addison Nichols, those two he got already. But just a, 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 um, a wonderful man that knows how to motivate, knows how to coach. Coach, what can you say about Braylon Russell? What's expectations for him? You know, Bobby and I were sitting in there watching his tape, and you know, we think he can play right now. Uh, he's got the size, the physicality, uh, loves loves the state of Arkansas, the university, uh, great parents. But I, I tell you, he's got the size and the physicality. He's really, really improved, in my opinion, um, over the last year. Um, didn't have to have – his statistics may not be uh, world beaters because they – they didn't have to use him. They were they had a really good ball club, and uh, but uh, I think he has a chance to play for us this year. What can you? I guess Ashton went official since you came in, or since? Yeah, we <laughs> won a golf cart, and I just needed a thumbs up. If if you talk about him. speed, he that wide receiver room. speed, uh, great kid, great family, uh, but speed, and uh, I think he ran twenty one three or something like that in the two hundred meters whatever it was, something close to that. Um, obviously, we all know we like speed. Bobby loves speed. And uh, so uh, we went out and got him. And obviously, uh, nobody knew about Cross uh, Johnson. I didn't either until about three or four days ago when we felt like we may lose a receiver. Uh, we needed another high school and we needed him with speed. Cross has run 10-5. And, and he runs it on the field. And uh, so we were able to add there. Coach, you touched on him a little bit, but I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about uh, some of the uh, offensive line um, transfer additions, where they might fit in starting out, uh, Carmona, Blackstock, and Nichols, and if you're planning on adding any more. We are. A, we are going to add some more. We need them. Now, listen, you, you, you know what I'm getting ready to say. This has nothing to do with what we have. We were young. I mean, you look at Chambly and Harris, and I mean, you can go down Kudas, you know. Those guys are going to be really good players for us. They got thrown out there. And uh, uh, that was, um, you know, we, we need to do a little bit better recruiting uh, in the years prior to that. Uh, but we, we, we had a problem of um, older, bigger, uh, more ready guys, which these guys I just talked about might be over, you know, over the weight room and, and over the summer. But we went in first trying to find tackles. I mean, that was our biggest thing. Uh, we felt like we hit big time on Blackstock early, uh, maybe four weeks ago, whatever that was. And then uh, when Eric got the job, he, he found uh, Carmona. And, uh, um, man, he's a great kid, big. He's very, very aggressive. Only played football. I think he played tight end maybe a year or something. They moved him to tackle. Um, but he's, he's to me, he's us, uh, him and Blacks out. He's, you know, chip on his shoulder, aggressive, you know, the old Dan Skipper, Travis Swanson, Ragnow, Tortola, that type group. And, and Bray's going to, if I don't mention Bray Cook, he'll be mad at me. But those type guys. And, uh, and then we needed a center. And uh, obviously we're, we're very happy we have Wiggins here and he's going to develop as well and it's going to be a heck of a battle in there and all those things. But Addison Nichols, Addison Nichols I worked out when I was at Georgia. I offered him that day. Uh, very, very, very talented. Uh, uh, but we needed someone that snapped the ball. 
And whether that be a guard center or center guard, however you look at it, we need somebody that that could definitely snap the ball. He'll come in. We'll look at him at center to begin. Those three places were where we wanted to go immediately. The next guy we want to go after is a guard that has the capabilities of snapping the football. And uh, so we're going to go there. We may go two more, but we're definitely going to go one more. So you, you've you got you seven scholarships, I guess, if nothing changes from now to right. mm -hmm. August. I've got you at like more 84, 85, but I can only go on players who haven't said anything yet. Yeah. Is that some maybe some super seniors that aren't taking advantage you, of that last year? Or? Uh, well, that would be one of them. You know, super seniors, you you have to ask to come, you know, come back. You're they're through with their degree and things of that nature. So there may be something in there, Trey. Uh, the other thing would be, uh, you know, we may have some guys graduating early, earlier than what we thought. Uh, would be one one or two and then uh, maybe a a medical something of that nature might be involved in all those eight that I'm getting at where you're a little bit different but you're at 77 right now 77 um, you said you maybe eight, maybe think. maybe 78 depending on what happens with the scholarship that we have out Coach, with Arkansas Edge in place, I'm wondering if you've noticed if it's benefited you at all with this transfer portal cycle yet. Yeah, it certainly has. I mean, it didn't benefit me a lot when it was announced the day that I was going through our team, you know, when I was talking to all our team because it came out and they were going, oh, we got all this extra money and all this kind of stuff. But, uh, yes, uh, it certainly has. And, and uh, um we're certainly grateful for all those that gave to that. We needed it. We're using it wisely um, um, in the NIL department, but uh, absolutely. And I wanted to ask you. You said so. You said Nichols at Georgia. You you offered him the first day you saw him. Why? I think he was might have been a sophomore, if I'm remember, remembering right. Freshman or sophomore. Very very athletic. Very athletic. Now I, I'll tell you. I, I thought he was going to be a college tackle. And I'll be honest with you, when I was at Georgia, we'd get not everybody, but, you know, almost whoever we wanted. So in my mind, I was very particular of what, what, who, um, whom we would offer. And uh, I offered him as a tackle. He had that kind of ability, that kind of length. And, uh, and then I, you know, obviously watched a lot of uh, tape on Tennessee and things. And, and, uh, didn't play a lot of center there, but I uh, did play some center in practice and things of that nature. And uh, I just think he's a very, very gifted athlete. That is, uh, I guess that's the word. He's he's an athlete, big, and and he's athlete, really, really, really precise uh, with his hands. And uh, I just I really liked him. We were doing one on ones when he was just a kid. And, I mean, he was winning every rep and doing it, uh, looked almost effortlessly. I wanted to ask you about Charleston Collins. It seemed like for a while there that him and Courtney Crutchfield would be a pair, but yeah. Crutchfield goes to Missouri, Collins stays with you guys. Mm -hmm. Just your thoughts on him being loyal to you guys. Well, I mean, uh, guys, let's face the facts. You know, with our year that we had, it affected – I mean, it affected a lot of things. And – uh uh, with our kids in a state that stayed with us with all the noise going on around the program. I, I mean, that's that's big time for loyalty. And because uh, we didn't sign anybody that didn't have several offers from, from the state of Arkansas everywhere else. And with Charlie, he probably was as top of that. Him, Wyatt Simmons had a tremendous amount. You know, Braylon, all these guys. And to stay here it just proves that they're going to be really damn good hogs because they wanted to be here. And uh, with Charlie staying with us, um, uh, that was special, him and the other uh, the other four as well, the other four besides him. Coach, going back to Ashton Bethel-Roman, I know you said what he brings to the table, but you know he had visited a couple other schools here down the stretch. Just what's the key to, to keeping a guy locked in like that when he's obviously exploring his other options? Well, it's hard. I mean, Kenny, Kenny obviously did a nice job with the family, and, and uh, um, our relationships helped us. Um, uh, Bobby, I think, has done a tremendous job of getting to know him uh, since he's been here. Um, 
Bobby met with him. Well, I'm pretty sure we all did about an hour over the last – an hour a day over the last few days. But uh, Bobby did a tremendous job with him as well of showing him why. Uh, we, why he wants to use him, how how he's going to use him. But I think it goes back to say a lot about the young man. He wanted to come to Arkansas and uh, and and the parents uh, allowing him, you know, to make the choice of what, whatever his choice was. It wasn't until this past weekend that K.J. Jefferson announced he was going in the portal. Was that something you kind of knew was coming and that – knowledge maybe help you when you went out looking in the portal for for a guy to bring in yeah i mean it was basically um a um whenever we had our exit meeting it was you know uh, we knew that he, that he he was going to go um explore other colleges and and we certainly were uh happy that he spent his years with us and what he did with us but uh, that was that was kind of understood. That's what he was going to do. And also, the you mentioned the in-state guys that you you got the loyalty and everything. Just how would you assess your in-state recruiting this year uh, as a whole? Well, I mean, there's obviously every year if you don't get them all, you're disappointed. Um, uh, but at the same time, we had done such a nice job in our recruiting department of having others ready. You know. Um, uh, we wanted to stay as loyal as possible to the kids from the state. Uh, and uh, uh, so sometimes you're not going to get them all, and, and it's disappointing uh, because uh, we feel like for their life and for their career and for their passion, they help us win. But at the same time, um, uh, we have to make decisions, and I'm not telling you we're always right in those things, but – we have to make decisions, we make them, and then we worry about the ones that are here and not the ones that aren't. That we don't worry about that. Coach, you talked about Simmons a little bit, but talk about Sorry, Simmons, and Logan, those linebackers. Well, Wyatt, uh, let's start with him, very, 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 very aggressive. Uh, Daddy, obviously, is a great coach. One to Natty, you know, they're at Harding University and – Honestly, the last two games weren't close, you know. So, man, what a great team they had. And congratulations there uh, to Paul and, 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 and his coaching staff. But Wyatt uh, comes from, obviously, a father uh, background of coaching, very, very physical, uh, can run, played, played a little bit of everything, played tight end, played, played running back. Um, but he's a linebacker. He's a Mike linebacker to me. He can play Willie, too. But – He's a guy that go sick him, go go after the football. Logan was a guy that wasn't quite as highly recruited as those guys, um, but we really liked his size and his, you know, T. Will kind of went after him. That was his guy that he goes, you know, he knew a little bit about him and things of that nature character-wise. Uh, great kid. And then Sori uh, is a guy, is an athlete, a guy that can run side to side, um, um, we, we'll turn him loose and see what happens. But uh, he was used primarily there more uh, in his career as a pass rusher. You talk a little bit about the two quarterbacks also. Well, when we got – obviously, we had K.J. Jackson committed. And then Bobby goes – and I said, you know, some of the first things we did is look at who we're recruiting because it's now, you know. Then we went back and saw who we have on the team. and. Uh, Coach and I have spent a lot of time watching film together, whether it be the ones we have or the recruits we're trying to get. And uh, when he saw K.J. Jackson, he said, man, this guy is – I mean, he's athletic, he's smooth, he, he's got a quick release, he's very accurate. And I said, well, if you like the tape, you're going to love the kid. And then we went on a home visit and what, what a wonderful family. And, uh, I mean, he's six five. Every, I mean, he's, he's a big man and uh, that can run and has a, has a very, very strong arm. And uh, Taylor, we, you know, we had about probably five guys uh, that we were on for quarterbacks and a portal. Um, Bobby and I both wanted Taylor Green. I mean, we, that's the guy that we decided to go after. Uh, fortunately, we went after him. Uh, obviously, I think we've all know about his game that he had, you know, in the championship there. 
Uh, he's what we're looking for athletically. He's kind of KJ and him are similar. You know, they're both. I'm talking about KJ Jackson and him are very similar. They throw the football and they can run the football. But I love his leadership. Uh, and you know, the quarterback's job is, in my opinion, is to make everybody around him, including the defense, better. I think he has that leadership. He's got that what you call that aura about him. Uh, that I think he's going to uh, really uh, make everybody around him a better better football player. Yeah, Sam, I know you touched on some of these in-state signings already, but from what I read, Collins was the highest-ranked guy. What, what do you like about him, and just what do you think about the, the group as a whole, what, what they bring yeah, to Charlie you? really brings a long, athletic uh, guy who loves to play the, the game. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about Wyatt Simmons. We talked a little bit about Braylon. Uh, Kobe Branham. Kobe Branham, I love him now. I love big, athletic guys. Love his family. Um, but I tell you what, he I think he's going to be really special. I think Kim Dammer and that group over there did a really good uh, job with him. And uh, and then C.J. Brown. I mean, he's obviously he's local. Uh, he did a little bit of everything for his team. He's a great athlete. Uh, faster than what, you know, I thought at first, you know, even. Uh, but he catches everything. The one thing is he's he's tough, comes from an athletic family. Both his sisters are athletic. Daddy was. Um, and so uh, they, they can't say enough about him at the school, the type of person that he is. And, of course, obviously they were – they got beaten in the state championship. But um, at one point they'd lost a lot of quarter. They'd lost three in a row. And it was great coaching, and but it also was leadership, and I think it was a lot was what CJ did on the team, and and uh, so those are the guys, and and we're really really happy we've got them all. I know you obviously don't have to be a great player. Your dad doesn't have to have been a coach, but the fact that Simmons' dad is a coach, how how big a plus is that? Well, I think it's a plus on on any time you can get a guy that comes from education, you know, a, a coaching background, whatever that may be, uh, um, because probably they've been coached harder than anybody else on the team if their dad was their coach. Now, I know Paul's, Paul and Wyatt's story is different, you know, because Paul was coaching, obviously, at the college. But uh, um, the knowledge and and uh, you you seem to have a guy that if their parents are coaches that uh, maybe come in a little ahead of the game mentally because they lived in the home and talked about it over supper all the time. Coach, you mentioned Cross Johnson earlier just a little bit. I mean, what went into getting yeah, him? Yeah, good question. Bobby had brought him to me. Bobby Bobby knew about him. I did not, and Bobby knew about him, and he, you know, we were. I don't know how much tape that we've watched, but a, a whole bunch, Portal, high school, whatever it may be. It seems like every day that's you're either in a home or you're watching tape, home or watching tape. And like Brian and his group did a great job of getting that to us. But um, so, uh, again, we were just seeing if there was somebody out there in case we, we'd lost somebody. And as you know, Ashton Bethel Roman just signed – right before we got in here. So, you know, there was question marks on some of those guys in the wide receiver room. And uh, I knew we could go on the portal, but I just – we needed some young guys too, you know. Um, so, he was spectacular on film. Uh, he's not the biggest guy. You know, he's about 170, 175 pounds. But what he can do, how he can catch, and how he can run. He runs 10-5, but he runs 10-5, if that makes sense, on the field. Um, he's, he had a really electric tape. And uh, so I said, I want to go on him if we have an available, because I did want to save the other scholarship for an older portal guy. And we had that available, and, and we made the call yesterday. We we talked with Dion Stutz family a little yeah. bit. Seems like you've really you know been helping them out since. Yeah, I hope so. But just could you talk about him a little bit? Yeah, you know, just a a wonderful kid. Loved the outdoors. Uh, lived on a ranch, not a farm. <laughs> I made that mistake. No, I didn't. Like everybody kept saying, "Don't you say farm," you know. And uh, but loved the four wheelers. Loved the outdoors. And and uh, a very athletic kid. 
Um, I thought his future of, uh, on the field was v super bright because he was uh, a worker. Uh, I mean, he drove an hour one way to school. And, uh, but uh, he, wonderful family. And, uh, you know, if we all knew where he was, we'd be probably fighting to get there, you know. So we talk about that often. Um, you haven't really had a quarterback battle since you've been – I mean, it was kind of just moved right into KJ. Yeah. And when Bobby was here before, I mean, it was, you know, Casey, then Ryan, and, you know, it was all kind of assumed the next guy. So, yeah. I know you like the two-spot and stuff, but that might change a little bit. How do you plan on running that? Well, the, well, we've got to get the most reps we, so Bobby can see them, you know, live. Um, uh, so, we probably will start early in – uh, some two spot two spotting can be it doesn't have to be uh let's say this tray it doesn't have to be ones and freshmen and twos and threes it can be ones and whoever you want to look at you know what I mean on this field um so we we may or may not do that uh but I, I'm assuming it's helped us in the past I'm assuming we will but obviously that battles we've got three guys there in a battle and so and then KJ will get in and he'll jump right in the middle of it too. So um, each guy has to earn what they get. And so, But we have to give them opportunity to do that as well. So we've got to figure all that out. We haven't quite talked about that. I don't even know if Bobby knows that we two-spot or not yet. Uh, I don't think we've asked well, – well, I, I know we had not asked you about the schedule at all. You know who you're going to play, but yeah. you don't know the order of it. What are your thoughts on how the schedule Yeah, I like up? the schedule. Uh, I know we have uh, – I believe it's LSU, Tennessee, um, uh, Texas, and somebody else here, uh, Ole Miss at home. I know, I know that uh, in the league. And uh, certainly that's a, a big deal. I know we go to o Oklahoma State will be obviously a tough task, but – I'm really excited about uh, the 16 teams and the way they did it. I think it's fair. Um, I think our schedule's fair. It's obviously tough because it's in the SEC, but um, I like where we're at. I like the two buys, Trey. You know, I like the two buys. I think we always play well after a buy. Well, we have. And uh, I like those two buys in there. We're starting a little earlier, the 31st of August, um, but over in uh, Little Rock. But – uh, I like the schedule. Same uh, Juju Pope. Uh, what? Where do you? I think I've seen him yeah. listed as a linebacker. I think you got him listed as a DB online. Just where do you envision him playing? But he's really an athlete. And here's what happened with Juju. Uh, we watched his tape, and we were doing the same thing. We were going, where are we going to play this kid? We're going to play him at hog. We're going to play him at linebacker. We're going to play him at running back. Um, and so what I said was, look, if we can sign 20 guys better than him. You know, I don't think we can. And so I said, let's take him, and then we'll figure out where we're going to play him when he gets here. On our depth chart right now, he's a hog. Uh, so we'll see. But uh, we know he could play running back. We know he could probably play a safety. And I think he might could play a Willie linebacker as well, you know, or a box linebacker. Uh, but we'll just wait and see. But uh, we took him because I didn't think we could sign 20 guys better than him. I know you've got Bobby as your offensive coordinator, now Coach Mateos at offensive line. Do you anticipate any other staff changes potentially this offseason? Uh, no, not that, not, not that I'm aware of, no. Yeah, Coach, Kevin Henderson was the first kid that committed to you in this class. He stayed with you the whole time. Talk about – you were talking about loyalty earlier, but talk about Henderson. I mean, that's you. a lot of loyalty. You know, if you look down here, guys, and I'll get with that. It's a good question. I was uh, – a lot of times you get in here and you're and you're 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 pushing. I think he's going to do something, but you might be the only one thinking he's going to do that. You look down this list. There's multiple, 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 multiple people that want the guys that we got, and uh, he's one of them. I mean, he came from Alabama. He had you know he had both state schools offer him one. Uh, uh, he stayed with us. I think it has something to do with his grandma. It has something to do with him, his coach, and Deke Adams. I think all those guys did a good job. But none of those other people would have a hold to stay loyal to us, especially the way our season went, if he didn't want to. And so 
Um, just a wonderful kid, really good player, really good player. And um, we're great person, and we're just really pleased and, and happy and honored that he stayed with us. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys.